Good morning. The peace of the Lord be with you. Today is the fourth Sunday of Pentecost, and the flowers on the altar this morning were arranged by Pat Jorzak in memory of Dwight Ebling, who died this past week in his apartment at Glen Meadow. Uh, First Church of Christ is an open and affirming church, which means you're welcome here no matter where you're from, no matter who you love, and no matter where you're at on your spiritual journeys. We welcome you here if you're in person or online this morning. We also are an intergenerational church and place a high priority on our children's and youth ministries. In the summers, we sort of have a one-room school, church school uh, in the summer, so kids are welcome to go up after the children's moment. There are also welcome cards in each of your pews, and if you'd like to stay in touch with things going on uh, during the week and and on the weekends, you can fill those out, and uh, we'll take your emails and put them online. If for some reason you're not getting emails, just let us know. If you're a longer-term attender but still aren't getting emails, fill out one of those cards anyway and just write a little note to please add you to the email list. Lamentations 3.22 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Would you please stand for the call to worship? Good morning. Our scripture reading is Acts 10.34-40. No, we're doing the call to worship first, Pat. Oh, excuse me. All right. Uh, I love it. That's okay. Take your time. I love it. I love it. Um. Uh, we gather to worship the one who created us, the one who calls us, the one who equips us, the one who loves us with, our with joyful hearts. Let us worship God. Opening. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks for this day. Thanks for the opportunity to gather for worship. Thanks for family and friends and uh, being together. Uh, we ask your blessings upon our worship this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please take a moment and uh, pass the peace by greeting one another. So we sing the hymn and then the scripture. Yeah, you got it. Ready? We can do a threesome. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Good to see you. Please remain standing and join in singing our first hymn, number one in your new century hymnals, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Those are the black hymnals, number one, Immortal, Invisible.
morning once again. <laughs> the, uh, the scripture reading today is Acts 10, 34 to 48. In this reading, we hear about the inclusion of the Gentiles by Peter and the Holy Spirit. Then Peter, Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We were witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify, testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard him speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The end. the children forward for the children's message. And we're doing the surprise bag, which means that they have something in the bag that I don't know what it is, but I have to make up a message about whatever it is. Let's see what we have here. Oh my goodness. Is this jelly, jello? It's like a snack pack jello. When I was a kid, we never got jello this way. It was always made in some big mold of some sort. And usually, the way my mom made it, she would always put stuff in it like strawberries or bananas or I don't know. But I also remember when I was on the swim team when I was a little kid, they used to think it was a really good idea to sugar yourself up right before your swimming lap. And so we would take, have you ever tasted Jello before it's made into Jello with the water? No? It's like really strong, but we would sit there and go, like, and eat this really, it was really gross. Um, but one of the fun things about Jello is its consistency. That has to do with like how wobbly it is. Isn't that fun? Like you just watch it and it kind of wobbles around. And so when you take it out, it kind of, it, it feels almost smooth going down. You know where you get jello a lot? If you go to the hospital. <laughs> and the worst jello you can get is yellow. I don't know why, but they always make yellow jello in the hospital and people are like, gross, you know, just, it looks funny. But red is the best, right? I don't know why. Everybody likes red jello. Um, and it tastes like cherry or strawberry. Um, so, this is a fun thing to eat in the summer, too, right? It's not quite ice cream, though. Jello is like, you can almost call it a salad and get away with having a salad. No. Um, so, we would have jello as a side dish when we were growing up. And it was. Not quite dessert, but it was pretty close because it tastes really good and it brings a lot of joy to us. So sometimes it's the things in our lives that surprise us, 
that bring us the most joy, right? And sometimes if we would get jello, it would feel like a special treat, if, especially if it had something in it. My favorite jello my mom used to make had pretzels and strawberries in it. It was pretzels, strawberry, jello, and strawberries. And it had this amazing texture. It was really, really good. So next time you eat jello, think about how God brings us joy, right? Through pleasant surprises. Can we pray together? God, I thank you for your place in each of our lives and for the way you surprise us um, in fun ways and that you bring joy into our lives uh, through things that taste good and that are a fun consistency. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job. Um, does anyone know they're here next Sunday, July 7th, to bring the surprise bag back? Are you guys here? <laughs> Do you want to take the bag? Why don't you take the bag, and if you can't do it, then let us know. Okay. Okay, Max, you take it. <laughs> you guys figure out who's going to do it. And then, you know. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. You can go to church school. Oh, do you want your jello back? Oh, thanks. <laughs> That was a good one. Yeah, they got me a little bit. This past week on CBS News, uh, they did a segment on a judge from Providence, Rhode Island named Frank Caprio. He is actually, a, he had a television show called Caught in Providence, where he heard live cases in front of the camera. And we used to get this show when I lived in Atterboro because of its proximity to Providence, Rhode Island. Um, but the show was syndicated in 2018. In other words, it went much broader. Frank Caprio was actually the opposite of most other TV judges. Like Judge Judy, who's known for her toughness, her firm grasp upon the gavel. My wife and I like to say, don't mess with Judge Judy, right? But on the flip side of this, Frank Caprio was known for his compassion, his empathy, and his grace. He always took people's life circumstances into consideration, and he ended up, he ended every case by wishing the person good luck before they left. He was fair-minded and kind-hearted, and it was always a joy to see him let somebody off the hook. On the, the CBS News morning show, they said that he developed his deep empathy for other people through his own hard life growing up in a family that experienced poverty and providence. His first job was shining shoes on the streets in Providence. Therefore, he was a TV judge known for showing mercy, compassion, kindness, and understanding. He also revealed gentleness and patience and warmth. Basically, he had a good heart. And the point is, it, the, and at this point in his life, he's battling pancreatic cancer and just rang the bell at the hospital where he was in treatment. And that means he finished the treatments he was in. And, and the whole city of Providence are hoping and praying that he'll receive a bit of the mercy that he delivered to so many people in his life. Sometimes the cases Judge Caprio heard were ordinary traffic violations, so it wasn't like a huge deal. But the person who appeared in court might have walked several miles to get to their court case because they did not have a car, nor did they have enough money to take an Uber and he would inevitably let them off of their fine. Or a single mother who was trying to face those life challenges, but also trying to make ends meet 
and he would have compassion and release her from her charges. One time I remember him even taking money out of his own wallet and giving the money to somebody he let off the hook so that they had cash to pay for some immediate needs that they had. He not only showed mercy, but he also showed grace. And what made this good for television is that it was hard to believe. You'd listen to the whole story and you kind of knew the person was guilty or whatever the case might have been, but, but it was hard to believe that a judge could be as merciful and understanding as he was. And it was fairly predictable. You kind of knew what was going to happen at the end of each case. And yet, in some way, there was a small part of you that was still surprised that he showed mercy or that he gave grace or that he let them off the proverbial hook. In our scripture reading this morning, the circumcised believers, meaning the Jewish followers of Jesus, were astonished that the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles. You see, there was a huge division between the Jews and the Gentiles. The word, the word Gentile actually meant other nations. So if you were not Jewish, you were among the other nations. So when circumcised believers saw that the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles, they were surprised. They found it hard to believe. And this was true even though Peter spoke to them and said God shows no partiality when he was talking about the gospel. And that they preached a message of peace by Jesus Christ and that he is Lord of all, not some. And they even used for every nation. So they knew this message spread beyond their ordinary boundaries and barriers, but they still found it hard to believe that the Holy Spirit would fall upon this other group of people. Some people in our society still find it hard to believe that God's love could be fully inclusive. They don't believe that a person can be gay and Christian or a lesbian and Christian or transgender and Christian. They think that God's love is limited by the social parameters of our day and age, and they cannot accept that a church like ours could be inclusive of all people and not exclusive of those who someone might deem unacceptable. The thing that they're failing to see or accept is that none of us are fully acceptable in God's eyes. Right? The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so we should find it hard to believe that any of us can call ourselves Christian. If perfection is our standard then none of us should be included. How dare we claim that grace and mercy are for us and not others? How dare we extend God's mercy to some, but not all? How dare we treat any group of people like they're not welcome in a space that has been created for all of us by God's grace, mercy, and love. On some level, the church should find it hard to believe that the Holy Spirit falls on any of us. But the amazing thing about God's grace is that God treats all of us as his beloved children, created in his image, and he accepts all of us as we are. 
In Romans 5.8, it says, God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Robert Capon, one of my favorite theologians, calls this divine tolerance. Divine tolerance. With regard to tolerance, I like to say gay and lesbian and transgender people don't just want to be tolerated, they want to be loved. Right? But divine tolerance is different because God has it for all of us. The text says that Christ died for us while we are still sinners. In other words, he didn't wait around for us to get our house in order before he offered his grace and love to us. He gave it to us fully and wholeheartedly. Jared, Notice in the summer, we tend to have more people over at our house as guests or visitors. And I don't know about you, but when we have a guest or visitor coming, we like to get our house in order. You know, I mean, our level of tolerance for mess is one thing in comparison with when somebody comes over, right? Um, but sometimes you get a visitor unannounced and you're like, don't, you know. And I know some of you, that's not a big deal, right? Because of how good you keep your houses or whatever. It's like no big deal, right? Or you have the gift of hospitality. It comes naturally. But a lot of us like to get our house in order before. But I once heard somebody say real hospitality is when you let somebody come in while there's a mess. And you're okay with them seeing that your life is at times a little bit messy. Well, Jesus comes to us in this way. He doesn't wait for us to get our house in order before he shows up, but he actually just shows up. And he lets us know that we're loved and that we're cared for. In spite of the mess. I think one of the reasons the church has had a hard time allowing God's love to be fully inclusive is because we disagree about whether or not human sexuality or sexual orientation, different sexual orientations are messy. In other words, many of the gay, lesbian, and transgender people I know feel like they were born this way. God made me this way. And the relationships they have and the marriages they enter into are seen as a gift, not a burden. And on some level, I wish the wider church would get over it and stop trying to control everybody and accept the fact that we're different. But here's the thing with the gay, lesbian, and trans people I know, their lives are just as messy as mine in ways that are totally different from their sexual orientation or their gender identity. In other words, they struggle with broken relationships and misplaced priorities and human frailty. Maybe they drink too much alcohol. Maybe they spend too much money on things that really don't have any value. Maybe they're selfish. Maybe they fail to show love to people who need love and aren't getting it. We all do those things. We all live with a certain amount of brokenness in our lives. And the point is, is that if we would just let people be people and do their own struggles in their own ways, but do it with God's mercy, God's love, and God's grace. Um, one of my favorite definitions of faith comes from Paul Tillich, a more well-known theologian. But his definition of faith is accepting God's acceptance of you. And I, I like it 
but I, it was actually during this, writing this sermon that I thought of an improvement, and it's accepting God's acceptance of you and God's acceptance of others. Does that make sense? See, accepting God's acceptance of you is personal between you and God. And that means God loves you in spite of your mess. But God's acceptance of others allows others to have messes too without us being in the judge's seat. There's a story in the Bible about the prodigal son. And this shows God's acceptance. In the prodigal son story, when the prodigal comes home to his father's house, he is hoping against hope that his father is going to accept him home like a servant. You see, he had already spent his inheritance. He didn't think he was worthy to be welcomed home as a son, but he was hoping to be welcomed home as a servant. And while he was heading home, he developed a little speech, which included a confession. He, he was going to say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. But when he actually gets home and begins his little speech, the father cuts him off mid-sentence. It's awesome. I think it was Capon who pointed this out to me too. But he cuts him off before he says, treat me like one of your hired hands. He doesn't even let him say the words. Instead, he says quickly to his servants, quickly bring out a robe and the best one and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and is found. You see, the son wanted to be welcomed home as a servant, but the father received him home, not just as a son, but he also treated him like royalty. And this kind of extravagant welcome and grace is what our faith is built upon. But some of us are like the older brother. He thought if anyone deserved a party, he did. And he was angry that the father was treating his brother like a son when he was not even sure if he should be welcomed home as a servant. He certainly did not think his brother deserved prime rib when he didn't even get a goat. You see, faith is not just accepting God's acceptance of you, but it's accepting God's acceptance of others. And if God extends divine tolerance to someone you find intolerable, then maybe you are like the older brother in the prodigal son story. You see, in a lot of ways, I think we need to take ourselves out of the driver's seat or the judge's seat. Or if we're going to be in the judge's seat, we need to be more like Frank Caprio, who extends grace and mercy and kindness and understanding. You see, the reason he got a show was because he was consistently merciful. He showed no partiality. And his kindness and compassion were good for television. And I want to say these things are good for the church as well. And the more we show them and the more we spread it, the better off the church will be. No one wants to be tolerated. We all want to be loved and loved on the deepest levels. So quickly bring out a robe, the best one, put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen.
was uh, relatively quick and painless, so she didn't have to suffer at all, so I'm very grateful for that. Unfortunately, two days later, her sister went into hospice care, mm. also for cancer. So I'd like prayers for her family, and that leaves one other sister who, uh, you know, in the course of a few weeks, is going to lose two siblings. So prayers for her family as well. And then uh, my brother-in-law came up to be with us, and he's driving home today, so I'm praying that he makes it home safe and sound. Thank you. Thanks. Stoop. Prayers for the Ebling family, Dwight having passed a few days ago, very peacefully. Then we'll have services here in another two months or so. His service is being scheduled for September, so we'll let you know on a final date when that comes. We also lost one other church member this week, um, Vanessa O'Brien, who died at the age of 105. Um, some of you may remember during COVID, our church went and did a 
drive-by celebration for her, which was lovely and fun to hear about. But then she moved um, south to be with family, uh, so we lift her and their family up as well. Any other concerns today? We have a joy from online, Mike, a uh, joy that I am making progress with my novel. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this day and rejoice in the warmth of your love and your grace. We are grateful for all the gifts that come to us in the season of summer and ask that you bless these opportunities to enjoy each other in the gifts of summer. We pray for your blessing on the families that have experienced loss this week. We lift up Vanessa O'Brien who died at the age of 105. We give thanks for Dwight Ebling who died at the age of 88 and also Alice Dustin, who died this past week after we were praying for her and her family at the age of 75. We also lift up the concern that Matthew shared about his mother's sister who also entered into hospice care and also their other sister who uh, may experience the loss of two siblings at, in such a close period of time. And for their brother-in-law who is traveling home, we pray for your care and support for all of them and their family in this season of grief and loss. We lift up the O'Brien family, the Ebling family, and uh, the Dustin family and friends and pray that you be with each and all um, who are grieving. Um, we pray over all of our loved ones who are facing challenges related to health and relationships. If they are ill, heal them. If they are grieving, comfort them. If they are hopeless, give them hope. We continue to pray for Richard Diefendorfer, who's also in hospice care at this time. We lift up and continue to pray for Uta's father, who is in hospital in Germany. We pray for Audrey Rich, who we give thanks is out of the hospital and recovering well at Chestnut Hill. Um, she is supposed to be home this week, and we pray that she's able to come home when they plan to have her home. Uh, we give thanks for Mike and for the progress he's making on his novel. And we give thanks for your place in the life of our church in general and in each one of our lives in particular. Help us always to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep in fellowship with one another. We pray these things in the name of Jesus and we continue to pray as he has taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Regarding announcements today, I just want to say we'll be gathering on the front lawn after worship for lemonade and water if you'd like to join us out there. Uh, it, for a time of fellowship, uh, we would be grateful. There will also be a new members class today at 1130 in the Buxton room, which is air conditioned. Um, and also child care can be available if you need it. Just let Marilyn know upstairs. Uh, that you need it and that can happen as well. So it's, it's a membership class, you take it once and you can join after that. Some of you have taken the class and, and decided to discern for a while. If you'd like to come back to the class, you're welcome to do it a second time as part of your discernment. That's perfectly okay also. Um, and if you're a member returning to the church, I call this thing remembering. Um, if you want to rejoin the church in a way, uh, you're welcome to participate also. So uh, it'll be in the Buxton room at 1130. We'll offer it periodically, so if today's not a good day, that's fine also. Um, also want to 
remind you that this afternoon at 2 p.m., Family Ministries is having their first summer ice cream event. Periodically through the summer, we pick a different place, or Maryland does, where we go to have ice cream. We're going to be at the Apple Place in East Longmeadow at 2 p.m. today, so hopefully we'll see you then. Um, we just meet there, by the way, and find a table and hang out together. So if you'd like to join us, you can. Also, this week, the Witnessstone projects from the seventh grade students, um, the artwork they displayed after the Witnessstone ceremony, uh, are going to be re put on display in Bailey Hall. They're going to set it up on the third, and then it'll be available for the public on the Friday, the fourth, Saturday, the fourth or no, it's the 5th, 6th, and 7th. So Friday the 5th, Saturday the 6th, and then Sunday the 7th. So after church next Sunday, it would be available also. Um, we'll have a couple church members there hosting. If you're interested in hosting one of those days, you can speak to Marika, um, and we'll, we'll sign you, or just keep the other person hosting company or whatever, that would be great. Um, also, Tuesday at 11 a.m. is Bunny Buick's funeral service here at 11. It's been a while in preparation for it, so I just wanted to remind you that that's taking place um, 11 a.m. here, uh, Bunny Buick's funeral. Uh, 1 Peter 4.10 says, Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. What this means is that we're able to respond to actively to God's grace in a variety of ways, including the bringing of our tithes and offerings. yet to be, that they never have a reason to doubt that they are blessed. May they in your love find rest. Oh, may our hearts and minds be open, fling the church doors open
lives cut short by fear and shame. So afraid of who they are and whom they love. May the message now be banished that your love is for the few. May their faith in you and minds be open, fling the church doors open wide. May there be room enough for everyone inside. For in God there is a welcome, in God we all belong. May that with dignity and pride. As they grow in strength and stature, may they join us hand in hand, as against all hate we stand. Oh, may our hearts be minds be open, fling the church doors open wide. There be room enough for everyone inside. For in God there is a welcome. In God we all belong. May that welcome be our song. May that welcome. Please stand for the doxology. Let us give thanks. God, we give thanks today for beautiful music, for words that nourish our hearts, and for these gifts that bless our ministries. Keep us in your care and guide us in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing our closing hymn, number 391 in your black hymnals, In the Midst of New Dimensions.
Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.